I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Mishawaka Common Council for the February 4th, 2019 meeting. Would you please come to order? Also, would you please place all electronic devices on mute? And if there's any hats, please remove them. Thank you. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Congratulations on your growth. Thank you. I know capacity problems are a big problem, you know, for you and your customer. Um, have you ordered the equipment yet? No. And do you can how long will it take? It will take probably three months to get it. Mm -hmm. uh, equipment manufacturers are pretty busy, and 
It may not even be three months, it may be four months or mm -hmm. five months. We've talked to them, initially they told us eight months, mm -hmm. but uh, we think we can put the pressure on because we have bought a lot of boxed equipment uh, in our plant, so the manufacturer is very familiar with us. Mm -hmm. And then do they come in and install it and yes. test it and do all that? They come in and you? install it and they teach us. Uh, they come in, I think, they would come in at least a minimum of two weeks. And then they would probably come back a month later to re-emphasize uh, re to make sure we're doing all the right moves on the machine. And then one last question. So do you, do you have square footage in your current um, building? For this, we do, but it's we're getting very tight on our uh, space. I can't believe that uh, we've filled up 100, almost 180,000 square feet. Uh, it, it's an unbelievable. But we do have we've got two different spaces that we think we can put in machines. So. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Anyone else wish to speak? Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Jiro, good to see you. I'm uh, one of the few people I think who was here in 2004 when you uh, submitted your first yeah, request. I remember. And, uh, so, as do I, <laughs> uh, believe it or not. And you know, I, not so much a question as a comment. Um, you know, you, uh, I echo Mrs. Walker's comments. You and your husband <laughs> started to be congratulated for the success that you've enjoyed in Mishawaka. You're good corporate citizens. Um, and it's good to see your business thrive as it uh, does. And as I uh, referenced, I've been one of the people who has voted in, uh, in favor of your abatements and supported them in the past. And right now I'm inclined to support the resolution that's before us this evening. But you know, my comment to you is that um, I do have some concerns and some questions that I'd like to uh, work through with you and perhaps Mr. Prince and his staff as well in between the two votes that we're gonna be taking on this matter. And just to give you a little preview of what some of my concerns are, the frequency with which you've been before this council and have been approved for an abatement is a testament to the success of your business. But I believe that door also swings both ways and it causes me to have some concern, not great concern, but some concern with regard to the, that frequency and the total amount of support that the taxpayers of Mishawaka have given to your business. And I want to make sure that it's an equitable and fair uh, decision that we make not only in terms of your business and your interests and your bottom line, but also the bottom line of the taxpayers. So I don't want to belabor the point tonight. I think it's going to be more productive if we can have some interaction either in a committee meeting or in between time um, individually. Sure. Um, but I wanted to let you know that I do have some issues that I'm going to ask for your assistance in working through. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Madam yeah, Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Thank you for coming this evening. Quick question: You mentioned that this you already have uh, a gluer such as this, correct? Mm -hmm. This would be your second. In part, my uh, my memory. Did you seek a tax abatement for the first one? Um, actually, now that I'm saying this, we actually have two gluers. Okay. Uh, the second one, I did not ask for tax abatement for. We asked for the first one, which was a 138 inch gluer. Uh, the second one was a 70 inch gluer. And I did not ask for tax abatement for that. And you had mentioned it's, it's state of the art yes. equipment. Is this something that's commonly used in the industry? Do your, your competitors have a model similar to this, or is mostly used by independents like us? Uh, we tend to get the cartons that the big guys don't want, or the ones that are harder to make. And this machine is very instrumental in making the ones that are really hard to make. Uh, I don't know if. If you've seen like, Christmas boxes with the four corners glue sure. that you pop open, uh, we have we, we can make boxes that also the bottoms are sealed and sealed on the side. This glue has six glue heads, and it has about ten different folding mechanisms which configures the paper. And do you manufacture the paper that corrugate, or do you do you purchase that? At J Mill, we buy the sheets and then convert it into the. Thank you. Any other council members to speak? Well, Mr. Compton. Um, Mr. Gerald, thank you uh, for coming to see us again. And uh, uh, I, I also want to congratulate you on your business and what you do in Mishawaka really is, is appreciated. Um, 
the value of the equipment that you're going to purchase. Am I looking at this at about eleven thousand uh, dollars? Or am I look? I'm looking at a document here that I'm given. I'll ask you, what's the value of the equipment? That you're the value of this piece of equipment is one million five hundred. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Very good. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not looking at something right. Um, is this something you mentioned to Ms. Volker that you have not ordered the equipment yet? Is this, are you waiting on us before you do that? Yes. Okay. So you, you may not purchase it? I may not. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Any other comments on the issue speaks? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, one question that uh, that I have now: Are you presently you are you having trouble finding people? Absolutely. Okay. Um, we could probably hire ten people if the right ones walk through our door at this moment. Okay. The other question, and and I uh, we were talking about this before we uh, we came out for the meeting, but looking at uh, looking at the comment that you said you indicated that. Uh, the uh, wages, uh, excluding uh, benefits, range from $12 an hour to $16 an hour, with an average of $16.93. I don't quite understand that. Well, we have different levels of, of people in our organization. Oh, I, I know that. I mean, do, but you don't have exempt and non-exempt in here. This is just hourly, right? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, what I, what I, my point is, if, if the range is from 12 to 16, how could the average be 1693? I think that is including both the salary and the hourly. If you're on um, H on the application on page 5, it says what is the blended hourly wage rate? Is that what you're talking about, Mike? Yeah, I just. I, I think that says hourly and salary. Mr. President, if, and, and Dave, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you originally met and you were going through these forms, the controller had asked us about that question. And one of the issues that came up was when they put this new line in, they didn't likely take experienced operators from the existing machine and bring them over. They have a higher wage, is my understanding, up to like $20 an hour compared to the other equipment, which in my mind is what made the discrepancy that Mr. Delegation was talking about was the existing employees, we're talking about the new jobs coming in would range from twelve to sixteen dollars an hour. The existing that are blended into this whole relationship, if you will, um, for that line or higher. That was my understanding that well, that, that, that makes correct. sense. That that does make sense. So, yeah. Any thoughts? Then depending on that, on Mr. Doldich's question, on the next step to, to the new machine, you say you pay us from eleven dollars to fifteen dollars, and that, and then the median is, is less. You say you're not going to have experienced people transferring over on that new machine. No, we will have <coughs> we will have some new people who have some experience running our other machines uh, to step in and, and start to run that, and then train people to be able to step up to become the operators. As they step up, their, their wages will go up because the main operator, I think, probably makes 18, I don't know exactly. But I noticed the new machine, the, the pay was lower than with the other. Yeah, the probably, probably the lowest pay on that, those machines will be probably about 12 bucks, and that would be probably the people on the takeoff end, I would guess. It'll be around that. I think our average wage starting out now, with just people coming in, I think is around 1150, and it it goes up. The, the the more sophisticated the machine is, it has computerized things on it. The more the our average goes up per hour. Also, you mentioned or you didn't, but it was on the application that you have a plant in Tennessee. We do. Uh, have you asked for any abatements down in Tennessee? Um, no, well, 
we moved it to, we moved to that to Tennessee in 1985. Uh, I was not the owner of the company then. I worked for somebody then. Um, <clears throat> I can't tell you exactly the financial things that Tennessee gave us because I was not privy to it. I will say that they were very anxious for us to move down there. Uh, they wanted to dine us. They moved us around. The, the Tennessee Power Authority actually came in and did some instrumental stuff. But I don't know the dollars and cents wise what they gave Ira, the previous owner. So that I didn't have access to it. I, I was at that point in my career. I was more in sales, and that was my focus down there. Okay. From that day, from purchase to now, we don't know if they've had any cash. We have no. We have not ask for any down there because pretty much we moved our old equipment down there and made Mission Walk as a main thrust of our organization. Okay. There you on, on the, any of the tax payments that we've had on the equipment in previous years, has that equipment been moved down to Tennessee? No. So that all the tax payment equipment? All the, 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 the tax payment that we've had, that all that equipment is still running and producing very well. In, uh, Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of Resolution 2019-3? If you'd come forward, please can give your name and address for the record. Mr. President, Councilman City Planner, and on behalf of the administration, of course, we're in support of everything fucking bad in the report. But what I wanted to point out why I'm up here is, is Mr. Compton, on the last page of the report is actually the quote from the company uh, for the one point. Yeah, I found it. Okay, I had a kick to it. Okay. okay. I just wanted to make sure you did not. I do see it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there any questions for Mr. Prince? Thank you, Mr. President. Oh, yes. Mr. Prince, uh, just out of curiosity, does the uh, uh, economic development team uh, within the city, the planning department, uh, is there a target wage uh, or average wage that we uh, tend to look at for abatements or what, what we consider a qualified wage for added jobs? Um, no, we do not have a specific threshold. We do that so we maintain our flexibility. I will say that from our perspective, and it was brought up a little bit in the organizational meeting regarding when we do an abatement, what we recommend, we've actually had abatements that haven't, um, that people have come in and said, oh, we need to do this on an abatement. And we've told them that, you know, our threshold is about a million dollars. I think the lowest um, investment that we've done was for, I want to say, culture systems on Home Street, and they were there, um, it was about $800,000, and it was a lower, um, the economy was worse at that point in time, and we were happy to, to have it. Um, so our, our general threshold that we tell people is about a million dollars in capital improvement. And then jobs, we want it to be above um, uh, minimum wage, essentially, uh, is really how we look at it. And I would say the $11, $12 range. If somebody came in with probably $10 an hour, we would question it. Um, but at 11 or 12, we're talking about $4 above minimum wage. I think it's, I, I think it's reasonable. And, and if we look at it with that kind of windshield view. We don't have this. Thanks. I was just going to get an idea of the philosophy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Manley. Thank you, Mr. Evans. <coughs> Mr. Prince, just to, to refresh my memory, on your annual um, tax abatement report that you provide to us, mm -hmm. if I recall that uh, Jamil uh, has always received uh, a high grade in terms of... They have. I did, not, I did not study that, the history, obviously. They've got a lengthy history sure. with us. Um, but I will say, I remember during the Great Recession, we had a number of businesses that fell well below their thresholds, and I do not remember Jane being one of the ones that fell below the threshold that they were asking the company to explain what the um, If you could, and if this passes this evening and it moves on to the next step, could you provide that information? I sure would. That'd be great. Thank you. Good. And any other questions? Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of this resolution? If you can please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition of resolution 2019-83? If you would please come forward and give your name and address for the record. 
being none. Are there any council members who wish to speak on this resolution? Seeing none, call for the question. The question. Madam Clerk, will you please pull the council? Mrs. Bolter? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mr. Tanner? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Ms. petco Reistor? Yes. Mr. Belovich? Yes. Mr. Hixenbach? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. The resolution passes 9 to 0. Orton's on second reading. Clerk. <clears throat> Proposed ordinance number 2019 02. An ordinance annexing contiguous territory to the city of Mishawaka, Indiana, providing zoning classification. Therefore, this is to annex and zone C6 Office Commercial 53013 Bird Road. This will be a public hearing this evening with no vote. Okay, this is the second reading of public hearing on proposed ordinance 2019 2. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this? Ordinance, would you please come forward and give your name and address? Thank you very much. My name is Troy Light from Lyon Feeney and Associates. Our address is 715 South Michigan Street, South Bend. I represent the petitioner here, FHS Investments LLC. Uh, the petition before you for annexation is um, a parcel immediately adjacent to a uh, medical office, and the desired expansion of that medical office is to uh, be able to annex and, and put an additional medical facility on the parcel immediately adjacent, which is the parcel here that we're asking for annexation on. Be very similar. We've seen the comments that engineering and planning have and are willing to design with those criteria in mind. Thank you. Any questions from counsel? Mr. Tompkins. Mr. Lang, is this. An extension of the existing business, or is this a spec building that they'll lease out? I believe it's going to be a spec with lease to another medical type use or with the hospital growing up in that area. Sure. The area. Yes. Small practices or needs. Yes. And very good. Thank you. Any other compliments? Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of proposed ordinance 2019 2? If you please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Seeing none, is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition of proposed ordinance 2019 2? If you please come forward and give your name and address for the record. Are there any council members that wish to speak? Thank you. This is a, it will close the public hearing. There will be no vote until our next council meeting. <clears throat> Proposed ordinance number 2019-03, an ordinance amending chapter 137 of the municipal code of the city of Mishawaka, Indiana, is from time to time amended, commonly known as the zoning ordinance of 1966 of the city of Mishawaka, Indiana. This is a PUD amendment to add senior daycare use at 6005 North Fur Road. May I have a committee report, please? Yes, Mr. President. To the members of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, your committee on land use planning to whom was referred the matter proposed ordinance number 2019-03 report that they have examined said matter and that in that in their opinion it should be adopted. This is signed by the entire committee and I move for its acceptance. Second. All those in favor of the committee report, please signify the page. Aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. This is the second reading and public hearing on proposed ordinance 2019 3. Is anyone wishing to speak in favor of this proposed ordinance, would you please come forward and give your name and address for the record? Somebody. I don't see the gentleman that represented the planning commission here in attendance. They have been important. They were should be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Thompson. <coughs> um, 
Mr. President, uh, with our long-standing tradition of needing someone here to tell us what this is about, I make a motion we table this and we let them know that, uh, we let the petitioner know that it's been tabled and we'll see him at the next meeting. Second. There's been a motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And those opposed? Thank you. So, Mr. Prince, would you notify? We'll notify. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, moving on to privilege of the floor. This is where members of the public are invited to speak only on non agenda items. Anyone from the general public wish to speak? Why? <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> you got enough time. <laughs>